Hello, and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent Molly Wright. As 2016 comes to a close, we look back at all the awesome things our students have been up to this school year. From incorporating exercise into learning, to fostering innovations in maker spaces, and even a surprise visit from some talented national newsmakers, plus more from our student correspondents. Hi, I'm Fern Creek correspondent, Brent Donahue, here at Thomas Jefferson Middle School. They hosted a showcase of different high schools throughout JCPS to help prepare their kids for the future. Sometimes, students need to express their urge to move in order to get ready for learning. At Bick Elementary, they use the program Go Noodle to increase both focus and attention. Sit tall. You can be on the ground with your legs crossed, or sitting at the front edge of your chair with your feet flat on the floor. We are at Bick Elementary School. Feel how wide your hands can reach. And what Go Noodle does for my class is it gets them active within my classroom. Go Noodle is when you have fun and dance. Now let your arms come and down. get some and get and exercise. exercise. Help me focus better. I have a lot of kiddos who it's really hard for them to sit still, confined in their chair at their desk all day long. And so I'm always putting that on for whenever they're getting a little antsy or they're getting a little active and I can still continue my lesson. Let your arms come down with a slow exhale. But they can do it in an active way. I did use it with my class last year also, but I did not use it as much. And now that I am implementing it every day this year with my class now, it seems to be making a huge difference. I am getting so much more teaching done because they're able to move around and it seems like my day is really flowing from using those videos throughout my day. It helps me in class because when, so like, when we're nervous, we like dance and then, we, and then we're not going to be nervous again. I like Go Noodle because Go Noodle is a fun thing to do. They get kind of bummed out when we have to stop, but they still really love them and they get excited to do it every day because they do know that it's coming. At some point in the day, they're going to be dancing to the video. I like it because you get to do numbers, you, you get to learn, and you, your brain can get smarter. If we're learning something that's not on Go Noodle, I can just click that customize button and type in two words, ten words, or some of them even ask for actual questions. So that's where I can get in my science and social studies content within a lot of those videos because they let me do it a little bit more specifically. We're going to do addition. You better get your knees ready to run. Like when we do the running stuff from mouth. I like that because sometimes we do it before math so, so we can get our own wiggle out and we can know the problems in our head. If it's the same problem on our paper that we're working on, we can, we can save it in our head and we can know the answer. 15 plus 2 plus 2. They're just so tired from sitting in their seat and so we'll just do that as opposed to a worksheet with their spelling words on it and they really enjoy it. My first thing was running and I had to run and know the answer. When we come in from outside is usually when I put on the calm down video because they're so antsy. Stand up for your next rainbow breath. We'll talk about, oh, math is getting started now. Let's calm our bodies down. Let's get a drink break. And then we start math. Takes about 10 minutes or so, but it's so worth it when I put on that video. When I started using it, I was really skeptical about it because last year it was mostly just the dancing videos. And now throughout the year that they've added all the educational videos, I use it every day as opposed to just once or twice a week because I can actually start using them within instruction. And it's made my life a lot easier. It's made school for them a lot more enjoyable and a lot more fun. We at Big Elementary and we love Go Noodle. Central High School opened a new maker space called The Colony. It's a hub for innovation and technology created with the help of University of Louisville's JB Speed School of Engineering. The mowers are gonna make the lift go back and forward and when, and it's gonna go up. Then the mower is gonna go in the opposite direction. This is Central High School and this is Maker Space. Maker Space, they've done a pretty decent job. I honestly do love it. It's something new. I thought I was coming to the school just to learn about computers and get better at technology. I've always been good at it, 
but the fact that my teacher's given me a chance to do something different and build something that I want to, that's so, something that you don't get to, to happen every so often. I'm still learning about computers every day, but now I'm learning more about computer hardware, which is my prof what I want to be want to be my profession. We didn't have all this stuff a couple of years ago. Now we have a lot of stuff. So we, it's really helpful in building stuff. Uh, this is a claw bot. We build these. We're doing like a little competition. You got to get all the balls on that side or in the little hoop thing. Today we are one step closer to being chief innovators in Louisville, Kentucky by allowing students the space and the support they need to bring their ideas to fruition. It's really nice to have something like this in our school. Like not a lot of schools have something like this. It's just cool to have uh, like a place where you can build robots. It's really improving our creativity and giving us a lot of tools to work on a lot of stuff. I'm like facing new things every day, new, new opera, challenging things that I have never seen before. I just came here in the United States after, I mean, three years ago, and I came to Central my sophomore year, and they had the robotic club last year. So I just got excited because in my country, we don't have any girls that work on the robotics or, I, I didn't even go to school over there. So I just th thought it would be a great opportunity for me to work and prove that not boys can do these things, girls can do too. It's really good. That's what this maker space we're hoping would help us do as a community. Because ultimately, this digital connectivity is a lot of good things like Twitter and Facebook and stuff. But you need to make things. You have to make this microphone. You have to make this table. You have to make those lights. And you have to make them better. And you have to respond to demand. And that's what a maker space is about. <laughs> I had the chance to see how Breckenridge Franklin Elementary harnesses the power of the media each day as part of their magnet program in communications. Many middle and high schools across the country offer selective magnet programs, but what you may not know is so does Breckenridge Franklin Elementary School. Here at Breckenridge Franklin Elementary School, they offer their very own communications magnet program which gives their students the power to produce a television newscast every morning. Good morning, students and staff. Hope your day has started well. Today is Thursday, September 29, 2016. My name is Rosal. And I'm Micah. And you are watching WBFE, Breckenridge Franklin Elementary Channel 5 News. This teaches students real-world skills such as responsibility, working with others, and managing time. Breckenridge Franklin Elementary School does not only teach skills, but life lessons. Many fifth grade students were eager to share what Breckenridge Franklin has taught them over the past six years. Breckenridge Franklin Elementary taught me how to be a better person. They taught me to be respectful and they taught me to take my learning seriously and be kind. Breckenridge Franklin has taught me how to be respectful, responsible, and a peaceful problem solver. Breckenridge Franklin Elementary School has taught me how to be a leader. Be respectful, be responsible, and be peaceful problem solvers. Principal Kathy Bossmer talks about the partnerships their magnet program has with major studios since they are the only elementary school in Kentucky with this program. Communications magnet where we have broadcasting, we have public speaking, we have social media, uh, advertising, just to name a few. We do have partnerships, three of those, one with Bellarmine University, one with um, WLKY, and the other one with the Courier Journal. We also do publish a newspaper once a month that our students run, and we definitely believe in student-led programs here at Breckenridge Franklin Elementary. We are Breckenridge Franklin Elementary Channel 5 News. We have a lot more stories about our kids coming up. Let's take a quick look at Jefferson Town High School's band. Stay with us. We are J-Town's Marching Chargers and we are JCPS. Do you need help providing school clothes for your child? The 15th District PTA Clothing Assistance Program can help provide uniforms and other clothing. Make an appointment with the Family Youth Resource Center at your child's school. Donations of new and gently used uniforms and clothing are also accepted. 
Call 485-7062 or 485-7450 for more information. Both my parents have diabetes. Students really think that they are sort of invincible right now and it's something that they'll think about in the future. I think that it's the actions and the decisions that we make right now that will really help us in the future and that will uh, determine whether we get diabetes or not. Hey kids, get out there, live a great life, but at the same time get to know the risk factors for diabetes and live a healthy lifestyle. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Fern Creek correspondent Molly Wright. Doss High School's new manufacturing and engineering program expands their career and technical education focus. Students are eager to prepare for their futures. We're kicking off um, what we are calling our manufacturing and engineering program here at Doss High School. Past year we've been approached by some of our business partners throughout the community who are looking for a school to start the CPT. A certification program. The areas of safety, quality and measurement, production process, and maintenance. Core foundational technical skills that they'll be certified in each one of those areas as a result of going through this program. And that certification is kind of their portable certificate to a job. At Dulles High School this is very important because this is a school where a lot of children aren't motivated to go to college so this provides another opportunity rather than just saying you either go to college or you know you're working fast food or minimum wage. This is completely different. This provides students a way to provide a substantial life for themselves and their families. I want to work at GE or Ford because you get paid a lot of money. It's like a better chance of you can get in college or a better higher job than most people but you got to a good degree doing this. Um, with our focus on engagement, getting kids in career academies, getting them doing things that they're interested in and passionate during the school day, we just felt like it was a great match here at Doss High School. This technology, we didn't have anything to, you know, ensure that students were going to get out in the world, you know, graduation day and say, I can do this job, I can work, you know, and not make minimum wage, make almost 20 bucks an hour. It's really important to me because, like, it, it's it explores more options than just doing anything in college like some colleges don't have manufacturing programs and this program right here um, you can just like leave high school without it just like going to college and getting a better job and being a manufacturer. There is a skills gap for in manufacturing. Uh, there's not as many workers out there available to come right into the environment uh, and be able to say let's go uh, and get ready. So the opportunity for us to uh, extend some of our knowledge and some of our needs uh, to a school of this kind and, and, and being the first of its kind in the state, uh, we have the ability to control basically what our needs are. It's extremely important for us to develop skills and create skills that manufacturers need in the emerging workforce. This, this manufacturing technology lab here at Doss High School is perfect for that. The skills that are required to do a manufacturing job in today's world is significantly different than it was 30 years ago. We're just very excited about this program at DOS and that our certified production technician program is a part of it. Local manufacturers, they simply can't find the workforce to fill all the high paying jobs that they have. So our goal is to transfer that knowledge and those hands-on skills to these individuals to help them uh, go get those jobs and really make a good life for themselves. Well, there is a waiting list actually for students trying to get in. People come up to me every day, how do I get in this class? Can you talk to Mr. Payette to try to get me in here? So it's, it's definitely encouraged students to become more involved in their learning. In the end, what we are looking for, Doss High School will be producing the students that are gonna go into the manufacturing field and hopefully fill that void um, within that workforce. And we want the best and brightest to come from Doss High School. One teacher at Ballard High School uses his dogs to demonstrate a lesson in psychology. Correspondent Laurel Deppin brings us the story. Annie, go jump. Go jump. Go tunnel. Students at Ballard High School had the opportunity to study human behavior in a unique way. Mr. Owen, the psychology teacher at Ballard High School, brought in his own dogs to help his students gain a better understanding of classical and operant conditioning and behavior. 
We're having dog training and illustrating the principles of classical and operant conditioning and training animals and using positive techniques to try to get them to do various tricks as also um, try to help with behavior management for, for animals. While it was fun for students to get out of the classroom and observe dog training, the demonstration served another purpose, learning human behavior. It is very close to human behavior because just like dogs are motivated by food and attention, we are as well. And uh, a lot of things that we're motivated by, we, we do just for that reward, like we go to work to get paid or we uh, do something to get noticed by other people for attention and they're much the same way. So the rules of conditioning apply both to animals and people alike. And I'm going to use my treat as a lure to kind of like get him to get over just like that. Okay. And then we kind of like get more and more of the behavior that we want as we go along. Oh, you want to go that side this time. Mr. Owens says his goal was not only to teach conditioning but also to help his students be responsible pet owners. I'd like them to learn overall that they uh, can train their animals if they have the time and if they have the patience and the desire to do that. And they can also make their animals uh, more lovable by making them more better behaved and to get them to uh, be a better part of the family, to be able to have good manners just like other members of the family should have. And I think it's a responsibility, a responsibility of all dog owners to be able to have a fairly well-trained dog and not something that's just like, ah, that dog's acting up again. Students walked out with a better understanding of classical and operant conditioning. I thought this experience was great. Like, I'm a huge dog fanatic. I have a big Newfoundland at home. I think it's really cool how even though they're getting older that they can still, like, do all the tricks. We learned how to condition, like, train animals, like, give them treats for reward for doing good things and doing the right thing. This lesson has always been a success, and Mr. Owen knows his dogs would enjoy coming back next year. I'm Ballard correspondent Laurel Deppin for Our Kids. Correspondent Jalen Level takes us to Fraser Elementary to see their students discover the Agriculture Adventure Program. Students at Fraser Elementary line up to walk into a healthier life. And this week has been Farm to School Week, and Jefferson County Public Schools Nutrition Services thought this would be a great way to end the week and to really show the children how the farmers put the food on their lunch plates. They have brought Agriculture Adventures to Fraser Elementary, and it is a mobile program that travels throughout the state to teach children about agriculture and where their food comes from, that it doesn't just magically appear at the grocery store or the restaurant or the school cafeteria, but that our farmers actually had to grow those things using our natural resources. The other, the other station that I also like is the seed station because I learned about squash seeds and pumpkin seeds are close the same, are almost the same. There are eight different stations, so they kind of get their hands uh, in the work that might happen, whether it's food production, processing, or distribution. So they get to grind wheat. Um, using simple machines and more compound machines. So they're also learning about technology. They get to milk a cow by hand, but then also see um, a machine that helps farmers do their job to make the job easier. My favorite station was the seed in the food station. In the food station, we learned about like sorting all the foods and all new foods you can get in your stomach. So they get a little bit of practical living information here, but we love that the smaller children are learning that. And they get something out of this program, whether it's kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. Because here in Kentucky, about 20% of the jobs are related to food and agriculture in some way. And that is a lot higher percentage than any other place in the country. So that is exciting, and we want to get them excited about food production. As you can hear, there's a lot of learning going on behind me here at Fraser Elementary. Well, I'm Jalen Level, reporting for our kids. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. My name is Ja'Cory Arthur. I'm the music specialist at Height Elementary School. The best part about my job is really the product and that doesn't happen until after the job is done. It's a moment of joy for me to see the kids finally have that light bulb go off and things click for them, to be able to do everything from reading rhythms to singing certain pitches. As a teacher, Hyde Elementary is like a big family. What do you remember from last time you were in music? Very welcoming, very warm, and 
open to a lot of different ideas that I've brought to the table at the school. The kids are important. They will be the future me's, they will be the future teachers, the presidents, the scientists that run the world. So it's very important that we instill values, whether it's in music or fine arts in general, at a young age so that they can be better than what we were. It's really cool to just see us all come together for the purpose of molding the future, teaching kids. I'm Ja'Cory Arthur, and I am JCPS. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Fern Creek correspondent Molly Wright. Local music sensation Lincoln Bridge made a surprise visit to Zachary Taylor Elementary and shared their talent with the students. Okay, we are Lincoln Bridge. I'm Echo Alexander. This is the rest of the guys, Montre, this is Ron, China. Montre China. Davis. And we are at Zachary Taylor Elementary. Um, and we're here to give out some food to the kids uh, for the weekend with uh, Blessings in the Backpack. Who in here seen the program? Who seen America's Got Talent? And we thought it would be nice uh, to celebrate our test scores and kind of recognize uh, our blessings in a backpack. And we were lucky enough to get Lincoln Bridge to come out this morning. Blessings in a Backpack, uh, it's one of those big programs that have been going on district-wide, uh, and it's to provide a weekly meal to students in need. So here at Zachary Taylor, I think for the past few years, we've had about 200 to 250 kids that every week receive a bag of uh, food items that they can take home to eat over the weekend. Our students are appreciative of everything that comes. This will be a huge deal. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. Everybody's kind of come to know Lincoln Bridge. Practice. Rehearsal is everything. Rehearsal is everything. And uh, focus. Focus is, uh, that, that's the number one thing. Uh, just getting together is one thing, but actually focusing on what you're doing, the task at hand, is important. It's imperative. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome, sweetie. It was, it was heartwarming to be able to see so many smiling kids and give them some food. Uh, it, it felt like a, a good hey. thing. And give me like a welcome. They always up on the star and wake up while the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops, somewhere above the chimney top, that's where you'll find, you'll find me. Lisa Harrison Rogers, a Southern High School graduate, led the Lady Trojans to a state basketball championship and later played in the WNBA. A hometown hero banner was unfurled in her honor. Students, my reason for having you out here as student athletes is to set an example of what hard work, dedication, listening to your coach at times, but of course, Lisa Harrison Rogers has accomplished a lot. We have been working a little over two years to get this banner on the front of Southern High School. And it's been rather intensive labor, but it is so worth it. When I saw yesterday this banner go up, I mean to tell you, I was literally floored by what I saw out of Lisa. She is such a beautiful lady. She was such a sweet young lady while she was a student here and an athlete. And there's just no way that she can ever be eradicated from my mind or from your mind. 
How does something like this happen? I, I have no idea. Really, it, I was just a small piece of the puzzle. I was just a girl who loved to play sports and be competitive. I was really terrified when I switched over to Southern in high school, in ninth grade, going from a very small private school where there was probably 20 people in my entire grade, and then coming to Southern, having one of the largest student bodies in the state, it was very overwhelming. And I can remember, like it was yesterday, standing down at the gymnasium doors, and there's glass panels in the door, and they had open gym in the summertime. So this was prior to me coming as a freshman. And I stood there, and I was so scared. I wanted to turn around and go home. And thank God, I found the courage to open those doors and step through those doors. And that's, that's when my dreams began. The four years that I spent here at Southern were the most special times. You know, I played at the University of Tennessee under Hall of Fame coach Pat Summit, won a national championship, was an All-American, went to the White House, met the president, played professionally, and was a part of pioneering women's professional basketball here in America. All those things were definitely a part of my journey. But being here at Southern in these four years, there's never been anything comparable to it. Correspondent Brent Donahoe shows us how students at Thomas Jefferson Middle School are deciding their future paths. Every year, students at Thomas Jefferson Middle School are given the opportunity to preview different JCPS high schools and what they offer. This year, representatives from 10 high schools attended the showcase, which is the most TJ Middle has ever had. Schools like Fern Creek, Southern, DuPont Manual, Youth Performing Arts School, Seneca, Moore, Wagner, Shawnee, Liberty, and Central all came to present their specialty courses. Um, we come to the showcase because we want to recruit new students and we're looking to grow our ESL prop population at Central this year. Some middle school students are not aware of the variety of high schools available to them. They say attending the showcase is very helpful. I didn't know that Southern had engineering. I want to go to either Wagner or Southern because Wagner has nursing programs. It helped me see which one is the best one. Central, I want to go there because I want to be a nurse. More than 7,100 eighth graders in JCBS need to prepare for their future. So this is a great opportunity for our students to see what all is out there for JCBS because there's a ton of choices and a ton of programs and we really want our kids to focus on what's best for them. These future freshmen now have a better idea of their high school options. For JCPS Our Kids, I'm Fern Creek Correspondent, Brent Donahoe. Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Joining me is the team from Fern Creek High School that helped put this show together. Until next time, keep supporting Our Kids. Woo!